Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Pilate wrote a sign and had it placed on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle.
I'm reading from the New International Version, Luke chapter 23, verses 32 to 43. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers sneered at him. They said, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise.
John 19, verses 28 to 30. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Amen. Today we're considering light from the cross. Light from the cross? Good Friday is one of the darkest days. It can also be one of the most difficult to reflect on because there is hatred and injustice in it. But as I quietly reflected on the events of the first Good Friday, I could see light. 
Today we will consider three aspects of Christ's ministry of light on that day. First, there is the glow of forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. What exactly did Jesus mean when he made this prayer from the cross? Most of the people directly concerned with his death did know what they were doing. Pilate knew. He preferred safe injustice to the dangerous justice. He feebly washed his hands of the matter. The common people knew. They had recently welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem and hailed him as their king. When they realised that he wouldn't fulfil their hopes in their way, they wanted to keep Barabbas. The religious leaders knew. They wanted to protect their lifestyle and were jealous of his goodness and purity. So, if the people knew that he was an innocent man and still wanted to crucify him as a criminal, why did Jesus pray in this manner? Perhaps he was expressing his belief that people are sometimes wicked because they are spiritually blind. And the crucifixion took place because they didn't understand the spiritual implication of their actions. Jesus chose to forgive them because on a human level, they were wrong. But on a spiritual le level, the crucifixion was part of God's plan to bring about the forgiveness of sin and the salvation of the whole world. The events of that day teach us a lot. And the greatest lesson we can learn is that God, our Heavenly Father, wants to forgive us all for all our wrongdoing and bad attitudes, because he loves us unconditionally. Turn to him and find out for yourself. Then there is the beam of promise. Jesus said to one of the criminals, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. These words were spoken to man who was dying, along with Jesus, on a cross. He had come to realise that his way of life was wrong, and he rightly deserved his punishment in the context of the time in history. But he also recognised that Jesus was innocent of any crime. It was then that Jesus gave him the biggest promise that anyone could receive. Today, you will be with me in paradise. This criminal had met with Christ. He saw compassion in his face and he recognised him for who he was, Jesus the Saviour. Jesus gave him hope for the future the promise of eternal life. This man was repentant. He received hope and promise for eternity. And what a gift. Then there was the radiance of triumph. Our reading from John 19 verse 30 reminds us that when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Christ's willingness to endure crucifixion, the death of a criminal, though innocent, had paved the way to God for us. We can pray directly to God for ourselves and he can personally guide us throughout life. It is finished, was his shout of victory. He had achieved what he set out to do, and that was to take away the sins of the world, taste death and overcome it. Jesus remained the light of the world 
throughout his suffering and death on the cross, his resurrection and ascension, and remains our radiant King of Light for all eternity. Let us live in Christ's triumph over sin and death, by his grace and in his strength. We can achieve this, for he has won the victory. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we meet to remember the day of the death of your Son, our brother, Jesus Christ. We come not to celebrate his crucifixion, but rather to contemplate the significance of the deeds of this dark day. Why have we called it Good Friday? Do we try to t temper the terror with a tender word like good? God of our salvation, help us to understand our relationship to the cross, to know that Christ died for our sins, that we are sinners saved by your grace alone. Grant us to understand the meaning of the words of the Apostle Paul, who wrote of being crucified with Christ, and of what it means to be dead in trespasses and sins. Let us feel the results of Christ's words from the cross, Father forgive them. Let us know what it is to be alive in Christ. Bring to this day of mixed emotions the calming assurance of your peace which passes all understanding. 
May the remembrance of Calvary bring hope regardless of what we might call this day. We pray in the name of our crucified Lord and risen Saviour Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. <laughs>